So dudes, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. I thought that I would make a video talking about different roles in Valorant, the different classes, and what can be expected of your play, depending on the character that you pick. So hopefully this video gives you an idea of what playstyle in Valorant you might be more suited to, what you're trying to get into, and it'll give you a, a good springboard of uh, knowledge about the different characters in Valorant. So I'm going to start with Entry Fraggers because uh, I'm working on the Jet video right now, and this is something that's kind of fresh in my mind, and I wanted to uh, get into this one first. So like I said earlier, duelists are your Entry Fraggers, and keep in mind a lot of the information in this video is going to be uh, subject to a case-by-case -case basis. So one example you can uh, you can do as a duelist for an A take on bind is to try to do a uh, is to try to do yeah. a U-Haul take is to try to get control of U-Haul. You have a spot that you can play off of that gives you cover. So U-Haul gives you a piece of cover to swing off of people coming out of triple box, coming behind truck, and then also when you go into lamps, you have a protected position that you can use to fight the heaven guy, to uh, to fight another guy yeah. maybe behind triple box here, fight somebody yeah. coming out of CT, right? You just have map control. The whole point of map control, getting map control on attack is to is to give yourself a pivot point. It's to give yourself leverage to do your job more safely and more efficiently, right? And as an entry fragger, there's a number of ways that you can kind of approach this if you want to get this yeah. map control as fast as possible. With Jet, you have smokes, and you can use these smokes not as efficiently as a conventional controller, right? If I want to yeah. smoke off the heaven angle, um, I can't really do that efficiently with Jet, right? Because I'm standing out here in the freaking open and it's just kind of, you know, it, it goes yeah. away very quickly. So Jet isn't good as a dedicated smoker, right? But what she can do is provide herself little windows of opportunity to move around the map in ways that her teammates cannot. So this yeah. is a commonly held choke point, especially with an op, to prevent people from trying to push up yeah. into U-Haul or yeah. to push up and get the plant down. So if I smoke this oh. off, right, and, and uh, whoever's yeah. playing with an op can't see me, I can get in the smoke and dash forward to cover in instantly, right? I can do that without having to, like, Raze can, ba can blast pack across, right? But Brim can't do this. Uh, Omen might be able to TP and do, like, something yeah. weird with the smoke. Um, but most of the other characters can't do this. Brim can't do this. Uh, Viper can't do this. Breach can't, right? Like, maybe he can flash yeah. and then try to push out and hope that somebody doesn't look at it. But this is a more guaranteed uh, way to cross a lane, right? Smoke this off, and then dash forward, boom, okay? But now that you're here, assuming that you win this gunfight, your teammates here. Can, can come down short like this, and they instantly have a lot less pressure in terms of their, in terms of their gunfights than they would otherwise, uh, otherwise right? If you're in U-Haul, and you're able to push out, and then maybe fight the Heaven guy uh, from a spot that he's not expecting. Maybe fight yeah. the Triple Box guy. Maybe fight the yeah. guy in the corner. Uh, maybe push out a little bit more, and then do something really cheeky, right? Maybe you, uh, maybe you get two kills along the way, and then, you know, you can really uh, get in the guy's face. So that means don't bait, right? That means don't, don't, don't sit around, right, like this, and then go like bang, 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 okay? Like fucking just, you know, have a little setup and go. Like literally go. So now we're gonna do this on an initiator. We're gonna do the same A hit, this U-Haul hit on an initiator. So this is a character, Sky, that you can kind of get behind, uh, especially if you play a lot of Siege, right? Because she has a drone. She literally has a drone. Or uh, her Tasmanian Tiger. It's not a doggo, it's not a wolf, okay? It's a marsupial, get it right. So you go dog, right? Okay, cubby clear. Pocket clear. Is there a guy you here? U-Haul, oh, okay, U-Haul stun, U-Haul stun. Right, and then your jet can do what I showed you earlier, right, yeah. smoke it off, go, bang, okay? Th communicate, you have to communicate that information to your team, especially with the initiator, right? Okay, so with this doggo, the thing that makes this doggo really useful is that it provides information right away that your jet can play off of, and then you don't have to do any guesswork, right? You don't have to do any guesswork with uh, w when you're clearing corners, right? This allows you to set up plays for your team. Also, Sky has flashes that she can detonate whenever she wants, right? So you flash around the corner here, okay? And then, Here. heaven slashed, go for it. The entry frag takes the engagements, right? But the initiator's job is to is to provide the information, usually to set up the engagement in uh, in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so this is for a basic A uh, execute on on brimstone. So smokes, by the way, 100% necessary on any map, at any elo, in any combination. Okay, you can do a viper and then another kind of smoke depending on the map, uh, especially icebox a viper is a pretty decent smoke by herself A lot of people don't like brim. I think brim is still viable. I think brim is uh, is viable on bind Just not as viable on other maps But for instance here, right? So 
Brim can get up to this box, assuming that uh, assuming that Cubby is has been cleared, assuming that this part of U-Haul has been cleared and it's safe, right? Get up here, and then he can smoke off truck, in between truck and triple box, and the right side of triple box. And these all come down at the same time, right? Whereas Omen has to go like, right here. he has to go into the animation to do it here, and the other animation to do it there, and obviously he can't do three smokes at the same time. So he gets up here, okay, boom, plant. And then you have your teammates, cover right the crosses here. out. It, uh, it covers off the heaven angle, and it also covers off any crosses around uh, by triple box. And assuming you have U-Haul control, well then, you know, then it's really difficult to, uh, to get around this, right? Because uh, the enemy team is going to have to uh, contest coming right out here. of these smokes and then off, uh, also you uh, contesting them while they try to right go here. for the smokes and try to prevent the plant from going down. But that's a little bit more specific. Assuming that you're just doing like a default heaven smoke uh, without a whole bunch of smokes like uh, like Brimstone has. Let's say you're playing uh, Viper or somebody. You have a lineup, okay? Or maybe Astra. You, you the thing with your smokes, especially um, especially on attack, right? You don't want to give the enemy the ability to to like play in the smoke, right? You want to get the edge of the smoke flush with the spot that. Um, you don't want you want to be able to peek blind out and then become a big target, right? You want to expose them. Launching smoke. I'm doing this in a way so that if somebody wants to peek out, I'm literally looking at the entire freaking site and I have no way of knowing where people are unless somebody else is on the site giving me callouts, right? So I'm stuck out here and there could be a guy here, there could be a guy shower, there could be a guy U-Haul, there could be a guy peeking under heaven, right? There's just there's just too many there's just too many things to keep into consideration. However, if I smoke this badly and I smoke it like this, right? And there's like a lip on the edge of it, that gives me a little bit more of an avenue to kind of move around. Okay, I can kind of, you see how this kind of lets me slice the pie a little bit easier? All right, if I smoke this in a way that allows the enemy to just drop and hide, uh, that's not good, right? Okay, so it looks, it looks useful for a second and then I can just drop here and then be like, all right, cool. I'm chilling, okay? This is actually kind of a common smoke to do on attack every once in a while, right? Because it allows you to swing out of here, allows you to swing out of there, right? It gives you more right uh, movement opportunities. So with Sentinels, since they're more defensively oriented, how can you help on an attack? Well, you can prevent flanks. That's pretty much their primary job. So Cypher obviously has these tripwires. Uh, here's my little trick to get it at uh, crouch head level so that way they can't jump or crouch over them. I put a couple here. Right. Pretty simple stuff. Then when the bomb goes down, I'll, uh, I'll have a cam set up. And then I can, uh, I can play off of this, right? Somebody comes around the corner, tag them. Here. May they have to go back and then take the uh, take the dart out. Pretty straightforward for the uh, for the attacker's uh, point of view for sentinels, but it's easier said than done, right? But like I said, you're you're pretty much your job is to get your util down and set up for the flank that your that your team can potentially get cornered by. All right, so I showed you all of that uh, in terms of individual roles for that bind a hit. Now I'm going to show you what the individual roles are responsible for on defense. So basically with an entry frag, right, you might think because you're responsible for uh, trying to take take gunfights faster than everybody else on attack that you have to do the same thing on defense. Sort of. Kind of, right? But not exactly. Okay? So the thing with, with a lot of your entry frags is that because they have movement abilities, they can act as scouts on defense. They can gather intel and then peel away, right? If I am trying to peek for intel on Brim or on Viper, or on, on characters where I have utility that I need to use for retake, I am an idiot and I should stop playing those characters, right? Okay? On Jet, I peek, okay? Are there people here? Run away. Right? If there's too many people, then I back off. I come out here for intel, I'm like, how many people? Da -da -da. Maybe take a gunfight or two if, if I'm feeling frisky, right? Okay? And if there's too many people, I fucking, I, I dip. Immediately, right? And then I give, I give a call. I'm like, Okay, look out. Two people coming, uh, two people coming showers. Maybe I'm on a boost angle like this, okay? Maybe I have an op, right? I'm holding an op angle. I get a pick, back off. I'm playing really close up here. I peek out, how many people? Okay, three, four, back off. Get intel, take a fight if you can, and then back off if there's too many people, okay? Stay alive. Play in positions where you can stay alive. Do not die on site by yourself. I, this happens so freaking often with people, right? They'll they'll do they'll do this crackhead crap. You know these these guys on these on these duelist characters will play like crackheads, right? And they'll and they'll run out and they'll be like, oh, I'll get a surprise on them, right? And then swing out. There's like three people here. You take a gunfight, bang bang, 
and then they, they may not be able to dash away, and then they get traded, and they're like, oh, I got my pick, hey, there's a bunch of people coming A. And then, you know, you lose the round because you gave up sight control, and it's like, well, I did, you know, I did my job, I got my pick. Okay, here's the difference, right? That trade was not actually a fair trade, okay? Because if you're playing on A by yourself, and you die alone, even if you get a pick, right? You got a pick, and you gave up sight control. They got a pick, and they gained sight control. See how that's not a fair trade? Initiators, kind of similar deal. It's a little bit more in the air, uh, sometimes depending on your positioning and just, and just the flow of the round as it takes place and what the attackers are doing. But, especially on Sky, you can use your doggo as an intel gathering tool. This is particularly useful for your jet if she's trying to farm orb, right? Ponder orb. You dog out. Oh, there's nobody freaking here. Okay, cool. Here, get an orb. Maybe you're playing uh, behind this cubby here with dog. Check what's going on. Okay. Is there anybody right? Check deep left. Okay, nobody's deep left. Use the process of elimination, okay? Literally, just like use process of elimination to figure out where people are, okay? If there's nobody freaking here and then you have somebody push out on A and you don't see anything, that means it's probably going to be a B hit. It's probably very likely going to be a B hit. Don't try to don't try to dump all your flashes way too quickly, right? Because if you dump them too early, then you're not going to be able to left. use them for the retake. You know, you can flash off for intel. Okay, if you hear the screech, you're like, okay, they're definitely coming short, like, really, really fast. You know, please rotate. Then, when your initiator and your entry frag gather that intel, depending, uh, especially if you're on brim, right, you can, you can smoke pretty close right to the here. site that you're on. Okay, you hear, okay, lots coming showers. All right, let's figure out whether or not we're going to hold showers more aggressively or not. And if we're not going to hold showers aggressively, I'll smoke Watch off showers. Smoke. Okay, they're coming short. I'll smoke off short. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. You know, try to get the smoke flush right with here. the entrance that they have to come out of, so they don't have room to right uh, to peek out of a more uh, a larger area, right? And then you know you just want to you just want to anticipate the uh, the hit and then get ready for it. And if they don't go for it, uh, try to figure out whether or not they are rotating around or not. Communicate, communicate as much as you can. Try to use process uh, of elimination to figure out what's going on. Especially on a map like Bind, where they can rotate really quickly, you don't want to over rotate, right? That's a really common habit uh, that I've uh, that I've struggled to uh, to stop doing, but I'm getting a little bit better at it. Is over rotating, okay? Don't over rotate. Don't don't rotate as soon as you uh, as soon as you think that the enemy has given up their take, because they might be trying to fake it out and they might be trying to bait you into into getting off of the site so that they can get right site here. control for free. Depending on the controller that you're playing, you know, Brim has area denial, right? He can deny plant, right learn some lineups, uh, try to try to combo up with Omen, right? Omen can combo up the blind, tell your teammate that you're gonna go for the blind, and then somebody can swing out and get the kill for you. With Sentinels, again, the goal is to not over rotate. Especially with Sentinels, right? Because you you pretty much you anchor a site. Your, your existence as a sentinel within the round uh, begins and ends depending on the site that you are anchoring. So you set down your util before the barrier phase ends, right? Every sentinel's different, so the, uh, the specific placements are going to be different. And then you get in a spot where you can stay alive. You get in a spot where you can stay alive, take gunfights safely, and then play off of the, uh, play off of the uh, abilities that you have set up and try to you know, get as many picks as you can before the actual, um, execute is- is followed through on by the attackers. And then you call for rotate. If you are absolutely certain that nobody is going to your site, you know, you- you- you're pretty confident that no one is, uh, that nobody is gonna be yeah. doing this hit based off of calls, right? Somebody is in short, for instance, yeah. out of short and nobody's there, somebody's out of shower and nobody's there, then you rotate, okay? When you look up in the radar and there's like four freaking yeah. people, then you rotate. You don't rotate when your buddy says, oh, one's, one's garden. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, well, nobody's here yet. So, all right, here I go. Right? You want to stay on your site for as long as you possibly can. Play and, and try to get picks on it for as long as you possibly can. But that is the long and short of it. That's Sentinels, Initiators, Duelists, and Controllers for attack and defense. The general uh, expectations that you're going to have within those given roles in Valorant. Let me know if this video helped you figure out what kind of agents that you want to play. If it gave you any insight as to how these uh, agents interact with each other in a team-based environment. Let me know if you want more uh, Valorant tips and tricks from a competitive standpoint like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. The Jet How To is coming out soon. Subscribe to the Gregor Gaming Experience to watch it when it comes out. Deuces.